Guys, Henry Gracie, Hedon Gracie, here at the Gracie Academy World Headquarters, Torrance, California. For an exclusive video, JITS TV. It's the first time we've done this. We're honored to be invited, and we have some special techniques to share with you guys today. But before we do, we want to give you guys the, the machine gun breakdown of how we got to where we are today. Hmm. Most of you guys already know, don't they? Yes. But for those who don't, the Gracie family was introduced to Jiu-Jitsu by a Japanese man back in the early 1900s. The problem was, these Japanese techniques were effective for most of the Gracie brothers, except for the runt, Ellie Gracie. Our grandfather. Boom. And our grandfather liked the techniques, but couldn't be effective. He didn't have the physical attributes necessary to apply them. So, upon watching his brothers practice for many years, he eventually stepped on the mat, tried the techniques, and upon realizing his limitations, he began modifying the techniques. And, 80 years later, 80 years later, never stopped <laughs> modifying. <laughs> never stopped modifying, never stopped inventing. 85 years later, we, um, you know, we end up with an amazing art. We're here today, we're here today. You guys, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, critical. And I think that people always ask, what's the difference between what we practice now and the Japanese predecessor? And to me, and I think what they're looking for is like, show me a move, show me a move, show me a move. No, it's not a move. It's a mindset. And the mindset that Grandmaster Ed Gracie introduced was, I may not be able to take you down and smash you the way the traditional Japanese techniques teach. But if you take me down and you cannot submit me, I win. He reversed it. The truest self-defense. If you cannot defeat me, I win. And he really introduced this idea that inferior positions will happen in a fight, especially against someone larger, and unless the person makes you say uncle, they, they don't win. And if two, people, if two people fight and nobody wins, who wins? If two people get in a fight and nobody wins, who won the fight? Ellie Gracie. The little person. That philosophy is Gracie Jiu Jitsu and uh, is, is the greatest contribution Eddie Gracie had to the martial arts, is this idea of survival first. Survival is victory. Boom. And the world has not fully accepted that yet. Yeah. The jiu-jitsu world still, if you didn't win, you didn't win. So our goal is to really, once again, shine light on the fact that if you did not get beat up or you didn't get tapped out, you did good. Boom. On that note, we want to show you guys two techniques and uh, things that we've been working on lately, evolving, refining things that we love. And uh, starting with heat ons. Sneaky to hold set up from side control. And they're not survival techniques, believe it or not. This one is not. So, side control, his arms are tucked in, he's defending his arm bars, my elbows are here. I do this, one, I sit on my hip. And from this hip position right now, if his arm stays here, I'm good. If he pulls it out, I'm gonna have to, you know, change. But assuming his arm stays here, watch this, I go here, one. Ah, uh, yeah. So from elbow next to the ear, elbow in the center of the arm, sit on my hip. Now I can see his legs and I step my leg in between his legs at the same time as my hand goes here. Rotate a little more. Um, as my hand goes and my foot steps, the second arm, which is light because my weight's on his body, also shoots in. Now look at my hand positioning. It's already in position to where if Henner straightens his leg, he kind of straightens his toes right into my palm. So my wrap around his toes is crucial that he cannot, if I hold here, obviously, he, not obviously, but it's much easier for him to break free. So I'm here, here, here. Now, holding this forearm strong, I pull his toes in towards him. To compare to what, go back, show him how the more extended foot, the normal toe hold, how you just fold your wrist right there. That normal toe hold fold, which you guys are so used to, is not what Hedon's doing, modify. He's holding it to my butt, and he's actually pulling my foot over a fulcrum. He's ripping it over this, uh, in the direction of my hips. Very different squeeze, very different pain, but equally effective as other toe holds you've learned. One, hip, okay, it has to be together. When my hand comes over, if I hit right here, right now, I don't really have a, uh, any toes to grab. So I need this to happen, so it makes this more accessible. And I do that with my shoulder, my bicep, and my whole body weight, everything just kind of falls this way. So I go, whoop, here. Well, I'm catching it. <laughs> now, do I always leave my hand out here floating? No. I, many times, I will grab it and kind of fold it in. But I'm just showing you how if your hand is ready, straight to Henner, I'm on it. I'm mm. there. You have to know where he's going to go. 
and put yourself, be there waiting for them. I've never seen anyone catch people like he don't catch people with this technique. In fact, I've never seen anyone even do this technique in my life ever, except for Hito. That's because I invented it. <laughs> and <laughs> everyone, everyone gets caught. Everyone in the whole black belt, every single belt gets caught. And um, it's one that I've recently added to my arsenal. After seeing him catch everybody, I'm like, yo, maybe I can jack that one. And uh, at the very least, be aware so I don't get caught, right? But um, check it out, I wanna show you something. So one thing I've been working on lately is, I end up in a lot of arm lock situations, right? So I'm here, I get the arm, I have my legs. Sometimes I cross, if they're behind the shoulder, you're allowed to cross, right? If your arm is tucked, you don't cross. But if you're under the arm, you can cross. Always the south leg crossed over the north leg. Then he holds his bicep. What's the most common and most problematic grip? Is this one, right? There are different grips. There's wrist grabs, there's S grips, but this one where they grab the bicep is the most common, whether it's sport, whether it's MMA, not in a street fight, I'll just punch him in the face. But a lot of times you'll see this where they'll hold their bicep and people are wrenching here trying to pull this out. And they do different things where they switch their hands and try to pry and sometimes they work. Or if there's a glove over here, they can hug at the end and they can bring this and rip it down. All that is effective. But I've been trying to find easier ways to get the hands peeled. And I call this one the trash removal system. Okay, check it out. So he's really tense here. I come in, I grab all four fingertips. Take a little, like this, look, I come in and I, wow. And I grab all four fingertips, like around. And I bundle them together like I'm holding a ball, of, like I'm gonna crumble a piece of paper into trash. Right, I'm crumble the paper, I, it's called collect the trash, elevate the ramp, remove the trash. Mm -hmm. It's out, boom, and then you lay down. Change the angle a little. This ele the ramp elevation is critical, hold it tight. So he's super tense on his grip, go in, all the way in the hole, all the way in the hole. Collect the trash, grab all four and pull them together. Look, I actually have all four in my hand and I squeeze them, try to grab your bicep now. He thinks he has his bicep, but I own his hand right now. Now watch the ramp elevation. I don't pull right now, he'll get stuck in the, in the elbow. I do this, which I have great leverage doing. Boom, now, I don't, if I pull right now, go back to my thigh, it's gonna get stuck again. When you elevate the ramp, you don't pull back. You elevate the ramp and you do a wrist circular. Look at that little wrist, whoop, the wrist scoop. So elevate the ramp and the wrist, the wrist, <laughs> the wrist. I just pull his trash and I go, whoop, trash removal. As soon as it removes, I take the elbow, I hug his wrist and then I slide one, two and I have my break right here. Problem, if his hand is inside my thigh, I know you guys are thinking that, right? Like, oh, what if the hand's inside? Then you can't go in and you can't do the ramp elevation because it's inside. You're right. You guys are right. I said it. Hold tight, bro. Can't pull. Base hand, heels are tight to my butt. Everything's good. Look at this hand. Turn, grip the wrist. The inside hand, turn, grip the wrist. Hold my thigh tighter. Mm -hmm. Grip the wrist. As I straighten this arm, watch, keep it tighter. As I, I cross my legs and I go, one, two. Back in. So by holding his hand towards his face with this little lever, mm -hmm. he can't, normally he can accommodate, 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 mm -hmm. right? But when I hold here, boom. I'm not only retracting my leg and holding Hedon's down, but I'm bringing my leg back under the mix. Now, the rat is officially out in the open. Most important thing, do not let the rat go back into the rat hole. If he goes back in the rat hole, you're done. So once you do the removal, boom, you go here, go in the rat hole. Don't let him go in. Hold, 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 hold. And then at this point, if he's very intent on going back in, check it out, hold tighter. Hold your bicep. Now, if, the problem is if I let go of his hand to go back to the, uh, the trash removal, he's gonna hide it. So instead, when I come out on the rat trap, hold tighter. Go back in the hole, bro. I'm keeping it here, look. Both hands let go, go in the hole, go in the hole. Both hands grab, both hands grab, go in the hole. Push it away. Put your head in, hug the elbow. Now, this is not even what I want. You wouldn't tap right there, what would you do? That, my friends is how I'm catching the arms lately, okay? So I had the trash removal, and then you have the rat removal, where you remove the rat, hold it, and then push it away, hold it, and watch that video again. Put your head inside, elbow hug, control, arm crush right here. He doesn't want the arm crush. He's gonna push, you're gonna take the arm that he originally forgot about, the original threat. People always ask us, is jujitsu still evolving, right? Gracie Jiu Jitsu, from what we learned, is it still growing? Are there still new, new moves being invented, new ideas? Absolutely, 100%. Um, and I think, well, how is that possible? Isn't it kind of a finite thing? And the answer is no. Jiu Gracie Jiu Jitsu is not a set number of techniques. Gracie Jiu Jitsu is, is a mindset, right? And the mindset and, and a set of principles, a kind of filters we call them, energy efficiency. If it's not energy efficient, it's not Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Street applicability. If you cannot apply it on the street, it's not Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Now, we might practice a move that is sport, but for it to be Gracie Jiu Jitsu, it has to be okay. That is street applicable. 
that's a critical filter, meaning it's punch safe. And third, natural body movements. It has to be based on movements that your body can do without having to put your legs behind your head or crazy, you know, spinning back flip. If it requires you to do a jump, spin, back, twist, flip, it's not Gracie Jiu Jitsu. It has to be natural, it has to be organic. So if it's not for everyone, it's not Gracie Jiu Jitsu. That's the key. So these filters exist, and every move that we introduce, what do we do? We check it to the filters. Once it passes the filter test, what do we do? We throw it to the people. Once the people learn it, perfect it, practice it, if it works for them, hey, it works for us. Right, and our grandfather warned us of that before he left. Guys, be careful. Make sure you keep Jiu Jitsu effective for those who need it most. His biggest concern was how big we were. Yes. And the interesting thing about us is that if we do happen to throw something to the people that is not Gracie Jiu Jitsu that is not street applicable, we say it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Disclaimers. This is a fun move right here. Our grandfather would not do this. Yes. But what he does do and what he would do, we'll also teach you that. Yes, 100%. You guys, if you like what you saw and you like what you're hearing, there is more. Really? GracieUniversity.com. The whole curriculum. Everything we ever learned from our grandfather and everything we ever created based on what we learned. Adhering to the principles and even the sports stuff that we've explored is there. It's all there. It's crazy. GracieUniversity.com. Check it out. Five days free. If you're not 100% satisfied with the organization, the linear curriculum design, the ease with finding training partners, I'll let you choke him for free. Guaranteed. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Jits TV. Jits Magazine, much respect. And if you guys are ever in Los Angeles, are they invited? Everyone's invited. What? Everyone. Doesn't matter what school? It doesn't matter what school. Doesn't matter what flag? And I'll even let you tap me. Keep it playful. Like you said, keep free. it playful.com. Whole different realm. Check it out. You'll be impressed. We guarantee it. Thank you guys.